Hey there, and welcome to a deep dive on something I know a lot of you are dealing with, caregiving. And uh, we really want to help you navigate this tricky area and find the best support for you. Because, well, caregiving is definitely not one size fits all. That's for sure. Being a caregiver is different for everyone, and the source really gets that. It's not about some quick fix. It's about giving you the info you need to make the best choices. Right. And one of the first things I liked about this is how honest it is. It's upfront about the fact that caregiving can be really, really stressful. And it even points out those warning signs, you know, like anger, anxiety, getting really tired, things we might just think are normal. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And I think because we're usually caring for someone we love so much, it's easy to feel guilty. Like we should just be able to handle it all, you know? Exactly. Like we should be superhuman just because we care. Yeah. But that's where this source gets interesting. You know, it kind of flips that around. It says, taking care of yourself as a caregiver. That's not selfish. It's actually, like, crucial. I like that. You can't really be there for someone else if you're completely drained yourself, right? Exactly. And the source doesn't just leave us hanging with that idea. It goes a step further and gives us a sort of plan to deal with this whole stress thing. It all comes down to what's most important to you right now. Is it keeping yourself feeling okay or maybe making sure things don't get strained with family and friends because of all the pressure or... Or something totally different. I love that it's like, hey, everyone has their own priorities and that's okay. Let's explore those. Yeah, it's like it breaks this big overwhelming thing into smaller steps you can actually tackle. Totally. So say your top priority right now is, I just want to feel better myself. Makes sense, right? What does the source suggest for that? Well, it gives us a few really good options, but of course each one has, you know, pros and cons. And one that comes up a lot is respite care. I'm sure you've heard of it, but it's not just about taking a break. Have you thought about what kind of respite care would actually work best? Oh, that's a good point. Not all respite care is the same. Oh, right. And the source mentions this, like there's in-home respite care or even like a short-term care facility. It has to work for you, A&D, the person you're caring for. For sure. And that can be tough, right? Uh, because there's that guilt thing, like, I should be able to handle this. I know I felt that. Oh, absolutely. And the source even says that sometimes the person receiving care might not be totally on board either. Makes sense. It's big change for anyone, right? Exactly. Change is hard. Okay, so moving on, another thing the source mentions for feeling better is psychotherapy. Yeah, this one really resonates with me. It's just talking to someone you know, like a therapist. It can make a huge difference. Totally. And the source actually lists out the benefits, like less stress, fewer signs of depression. It even mentions it can help with your overall sense of well-being. Right. It's not just about surviving. It's about actually feeling good. Exactly. But, you know, there are some barriers here, too, like yeah. finding something affordable or those wait lists. Yeah. That can be a pain. Ooh, don't even get me started on wait lists. And honestly, there's still a stigma around mental health, you know? Yeah. It can be really hard to ask for help even when you need it. For sure, it's a journey. Okay, so here's one that might sound a little passive, but the source calls it waiting and monitoring. Waiting and monitoring. So kind of like taking a step back and seeing what happens. Yeah, and sometimes that can be useful in itself. Like it gives you a chance to think clearly, you know? Well, get some perspective. Yeah, but, and this is a big but, the source also says that if you just wait, especially if things are really bad, it could actually be bad for your health in the long run. Right, like ignoring it doesn't make it go away. Exactly, sometimes you gotta take action even if it's just baby steps. Now one more thing I wanna mention for this whole feeling better thing is physical activity. Okay, so I'll be honest, when I'm stressed, exercise is the first thing to go. Hmm. What does the source say about that? It basically says we don't need to become Olympic athletes overnight. You know, mm -hmm. even a little bit of movement can make a difference. OK, so like. What are we talking about here? So imagine this, right? Your loved one is watching TV. Maybe you do some stretches in the living room or even a 20 minute walk a couple times a week. I like that. It's about fitting it in, not adding another thing to your to-do list. Right. And the source even says things like walking or being in the water can actually boost your mood. So it's not just physical, it's mental and emotional too. Yeah. Now that's all really helpful if feeling better is your main goal. But what if you're really focused on dealing with depression? Does the source say anything different for that? It's kind of cool when you think about it, right? right. The tools are the same but we use them differently depending on what we need. So if we're talking about dealing with depression specifically, how does that change things? 
Yeah, it definitely puts the focus on different things. Respite care, for example, it's still important, but now it's more about getting a break from the emotional side of caregiving. That can be so draining, especially if you're already struggling. Yeah, it's not just about the physical stuff anymore. Right. And therapy, that's huge here, too. The source really zeroes in on how helpful it can be for depression. It even mentions specific therapies, like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Oh, right. CBP. I think I've heard of that. It basically helps you change the way you think and act. And the research on it is really promising. That's really interesting. Okay, so there's one more thing the source mentions specifically for depression. And I got to be honest, I'm not familiar with this one. Psychoeducation. Have you ever, like taking a class on something you were struggling with and just having that knowledge, that information made you feel better. Okay, yeah, I can see that. That's kind of what psychoeducation is. It's all about understanding depression, what it is, how it affects you, and most importantly, learning practical things you can actually do to feel better. So it's like you're taking back control. That's cool. Now, we've talked about feeling better in general and dealing with depression, but there's another thing that I think worries a lot of caregivers, how this whole thing affects their other relationships, you know, with family and friends. Mm. Absolutely. It can put a strain on even the strongest relationships. I remember reading this one study. Hold on. Actually, I'm really curious what the source says about this whole avoiding negative changes in relationships thing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let's stay focused. So it doesn't actually give us any specific advice for that particular priority. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Respected. It does emphasize a really well-rounded approach to this whole caregiving thing. And I think we can work with that. So like those things we talked about already, respite care therapy, even exercise, those could all help your relationships indirectly. A hundred percent. If you're less stressed and you're feeling better yourself, you're going to show up better for the people you love too, right? It's that whole oxygen mask thing again. Take care of yourself first. Exactly. And don't forget about those support groups. Just connecting with other people who get it, that can be huge. It's all about support for you and for the person you're caring for. You know, as we wrap up here, there's something that's really sticking with me from the source. Talk to a doctor so important. We've given you a lot of information today, but everyone's different. We're definitely not doctors. Exactly. If you're struggling, please talk to your doctor or another health professional you trust. They can help you figure out what's best for you. That's what it's all about. Okay, so as we finish up here, one last thought. We've been talking about managing stress after it happens, right? <laughs> but the source also mentioned something really interesting. Prevention. Ooh, I love where you're going with this. What if we could get ahead of it? What if we could be proactive about taking care of ourselves as caregivers? That feels pretty powerful, right? It is powerful. It's not just about reacting. It's about creating a life where you can actually thrive, even when things are tough. And that's a whole other conversation right there. What does it actually look like to be a proactive caregiver? That's definitely something to explore, maybe in a future deep dive. I'd be down for that. But for now, I think the biggest takeaway is this. You are not alone. There is support out there. And by taking care of yourself, you're not just surviving this, you're letting yourself thrive. Love that. Thanks for diving deep with us today. And until next time, take care of yourselves. You've earned it.